Hey guys, it's Abby. Really excited to paint with you today, virtually or in person. Um, today we're going to be painting Easter Sunday, the sunrise um, from the view of the crosses. Um, all you'll need is, um, you can use any really type of brush. Um, it's pretty basic, the strokes that we're going to be doing. Um, most of my painting is going to be with the flat square brush, um, but I did do a little bit of round brush as well. So um, if you want to start by uh, making sure you have purple, orange, yellow, black, and white paint, some water, a paper towel, all that jazz, we'll get started. So for the first step, if you want to take your brush, as you can see here, this is the one I used, um, any one that's kind of whiter or thicker because we're going to be covering a lot of space. We're basically going to be covering the entire canvas um, with the orange, the yellow, and uh, we're going to start with the orange, yellow, and white. Um, so start by putting a light layer of water on your canvas. It's going to help keep that area wet as we are blending colors. If you could see in the first picture, there you can see bits of white, bits of orange. We're not completely mixing colors. We're kind of messy dabbing and, and brushing so that you can kind of see multicolors in one stroke, if that makes sense. Um, so just do a light wash kind of thing on the top of your canvas, and then we'll start with the orange, yellow, and white when you are all ready. So I wanted to make sure to show you guys um, kind of an example of what we're going to be doing first and then I'll actually do the demo. But you're, like I said earlier, you're going to be taking a bit of yellow, a bit of orange, and a bit of white for each stroke you do. Because as you press it on the paper, you're going to want to see little bits of each color. We're not perfectly blending this. Um, so as you can see in here, you can see distinct spots that are strikes of orange, yellow, and white. Um, so I will actually demonstrate that now, but I just wanted you to have a little more visual of what we're about to do. Uh, so here we go. So you're just going to want to go, not even like a half circle, it's just a little bit, like almost a rainbow is even too um, pointy <laughs> considered. This is just kind of like little hills like that. I'm going to come up a little bit more so you can see the overview. And then you're going to want to kind of consider this area. You want it to be a little lighter just because of how the horizon works. So stay away from doing orange as you get closer to the bottom, but I'm about halfway through my canvas. Leave this space for the purple. So this is probably high enough because you will have to blend the orange and purple together. And I'll just keep going here. And then I'm just kind of messily dabbing, if you can see. A little bit of this is gonna kind of sorry it cut off there okay now I feel like I have a little too much water here you don't want too much you can always dab it with a paper towel if you want to dry it up a little bit because I do like the texture that this is happening that has happening over here so Still a little more orange. I kind of want, there we go. I want that true orange to show in some spots. See how I'm just little streaks here and there. Remember to keep it yellow and a little orange is okay. You can always paint on top of it if you get a streak of something darker where you don't want it. See, problem solved. And then also since you're doing a canvas, remember the edges, you can kind of you know, wrap it around so it looks like it's continuing on. Need a little more white. And just keep layering it. 
see there, that's better. I'm gonna fill in the edges here. This is just kind of messy because this is the first layer you put down. You can do like two layers if you want to wait a little bit till this layer dries and then get a little more detailed. Now this one I started on, it was just on paper, but see how. All right, sorry it cut off there. Um, I needed to charge my phone a little bit more apparently. Um, but I was just talking about how like you want to have those really nice orange streaks because as you blend them with the purple, you might get some kind of magentas and red in there. And then I actually did another layer um, and I wanted to show you because I, I really was, I think I was putting a little too much white on the orange as we were getting to the top and this top really needs to be a little more pure orange just to blend. Um, and when you decide to do, you know, if you want to do one or two layers before you decide to do the purple, make sure that all of your strokes have literally gone from one side to the other, even if it's like using just the just the top of the brush. You could do like a small streak like that um, or like a little, you know, just make sure there's some direction to it rather than just kind of paint slab or paint dabs. Um, I think I'm pretty ready though at this point to blend the purple and you wanna make sure that your orange is still fairly wet at the top because again, you're gonna be mixing the purple. So I'm gonna squirt some purple down. Um, and then for this part, it takes a little bit to get to, to this, to this transition. So bear with me here. Um, all right. So first I'm going to start with a little true purple. I don't have it blended with anything. This is just straight up. <laughs> and I'm going to put a little bit up here to see how it's our, well, it might be kind of hard to see, but I pulled a little bit of the orange, but see how it just, it's going to make a better blend. I'm going to add a little white to this now. Just want a little texture, but I don't want too much white. I don't want this to be like a lavender color because as you can see in here, we're getting some rich deep purples in some spots. So I'm going to go back over those. Remember to fill in your sides of the canvas. See, now I'm getting too much white. So I'm going to wet my brush, dab it off because apparently there's too much white that's still trapped in my brush. So I want to get that out. I just want it to be purple for now. And I'm gonna still kind of go over where it used to be with the orange. I'm even gonna take a little orange, put some up here just to help the blending go a little smoother. The biggest thing, you just don't wanna see like purple orange. You wanna be able to have this kind of in-between color, which for us, it's, it's whatever's happening here. There's still a little white stuck in my brush there. And see how I'm not doing that full around right now. I'm just trying to get the colors accurate. So once I do get that though, I'll kind of continue to do the straight across in one stroke all the way. I even put a little purple down here just to kind of, and you can blend that again in with some orange, like just a little on top of it. So it looks like it's got like a shadow to it. A little more orange so just play around with it what's nice is you know paint is really forgiving if you don't like one stroke or how it turned out just... all right sorry about that I figured out how to avoid having these cut off so we're I think we're good <laughs> so bear with me guys um, anyway I was just saying you know if there's one spot you don't like you can always paint over it it's really forgiving and this is just supposed to be loose and fun so again um, I left this to dry just a little bit so if you guys want to pause here and and let it dry a bit and then we'll do a little more purple with like the darker version like the darker shades of purple we can do that um so i'll pause this or i'll stop this here and then um you know all you really need is probably about five minutes acrylic dries pretty fast so we'll check in in a second here okay so now we've let it dry um, a little bit more the top because we really want to start getting that purple dark again 
but it was good because we needed to be able to spread it over throughout, you know, at least have the background just like we did with the bottom. So I put a little more purple down because I had just a little bit left. So, um, yeah, this is pretty dry. So again, we're not going to just like cover all of our work. So pick a spot that you want to go and go all the way across. You can even like start up here like that, like as if it's coming off the canvas. This area needs to be kind of covered up a little more. I kind of want like a large patch of dark purple. So you can always do something like this and just kind of it will blend in with what you had on there beforehand. Still a little orange being exposed here, so I want to cover that up. So this is just kind of like taking that final layer and the details that you want to have. I like having a little purple where the top of the cross is going to be. So I'm even bringing this down a little bit, reblending this again. And if you need to reblend it, it's okay. If the orange is dry, you can just take a little more of your orange again and uh, go back to that color that you need if you want to bring down the blend, if that makes sense. So like if you had it up here, but you actually want the blend from orange and purple to go down a little lower, you can do that as well. I, I, I'm happy where it is for the most part. I just wanted it a little bit darker over here and blend in this little shadow I had going on here. Um, I might add just a little more orange. A little dark purple streak. I'm avoiding white right now too, by the way. <laughs> white is good for kind of that first layer background, not making it like look see-through. It kind of helps with that. But otherwise, sometimes it can be your enemy because it ruins the color of the actual, you know, the paint color you want. And then I'm gonna blend a little orange and purple together on the side here. Kind of have that. Do this again here. This just, it, it takes a little bit. It You'll know when it's perfect. It's kind of like, you know, messing with anything, like a messy bun in your hair. Like it might take a couple times until it's the way you want it. So um, it took me a while to get what I wanted with the original um, painting that I did right before this. So kind of as my experiment one. What I like about these kind of paintings too is it's, it's just with kind of abstract kind of style, it's gonna, there's no perfect look to it. It's just gonna be loose and um, whimsical, I guess you could say. I like to say whimsical. Sorry, I keep sniffling. <laughs> This is my first Bob Ross narration, so if I'm being super cheesy, let me know and I can stop. <laughs> I'm going back down again, bringing in a little more yellow, that final layer. Remember, keep this spot white. It's going to be covered in black anyway because we have the hills that we're going to do, but see how there's kind of this nice little really light spot here with the white. I want to keep that. I want to do that again. That was nice. But see how all of a sudden now this is looking a lot more similar to this. Like you're getting almost like a purple, an orange, a magenta, a red, a yellow. Um, and it took some time to get there, and that's okay. I mean, paint and sips, they're not supposed to be quick. So you can take your time, play around with it. If you don't like it, paint over it. I'm going to do a little bit more white at the very bottom, and then I'm actually pretty happy. I might do one or two more strokes again in the purple, because this right here, I might want to have it be a little more obvious that it's a brush stroke. But yeah, I'm going to just add a little more. Oh, that's pretty. See, so I still had a little bit of purple on my uh, brush. Gosh, I like that. Just keep consistent with kind of the over, because we want it to be like the rays, the sunrise, that kind of feel. Don't go straight across. I'm just going to kind of cover some of my, and the way you can cover, like if you, like this is the end of the brush, because I stopped my brush stroke there. That's why I'm trying to be more like go all the way across so you don't have to deal with that, but I did it to myself anyway. There we go. 
Oh, see, that happens. I made a little dab here on accident. What do they call them? Happy accidents? It's all good. This might become, see, that looks nice actually. I can roll with that. A little bit white up here. All right, I think we're ready for the black part. All right, I would suggest 10 minutes to wait now once you get to the place that you are happy with it because literally the last thing we're gonna do is the black cross and hill. The reason it's really important to let it dry is because obviously we do have white in here so if it's still wet and you go down the cross could turn gray because you've picked up the white from the wet paint. So give it about 10 minutes and then we'll do our last step. All right, so mine is pretty dry. So I think it's time to do the black. So I'm gonna squirt some black over here. And then here's where you can have an option. You can continue um, to use this kind of a brush or um, you can do a round brush. I don't know if it's in focus, sorry. Um, both of these are good. I use the round brush for this part, but really it doesn't matter. I am a, I usually these I usually paint only with this all the time. But you you could do either or. So we're gonna do the hill, and you can really paint the hill however you like. If you want it to just be like one down, or like I kind of did like a large one, a small one, and then a really small one coming off the page. I just, you kind of want to make sure that they look like they're on a cliff or something um, looking out. So, um, and also, you know, you can pick too if you want to do the cross in the center. I'll just show you how to paint them, but then you can decide where in the photo you want them. You could even have them on this side if you want. Um, it's really up to you. You can, you can make your painting whatever you want. So I'm just going to do the same thing again just for the sake of what I already made here and so that it's accurate with my reference. Um, so I'm gonna take the black, I am gonna use my square brush. I literally have not used any other brush during this. Um, but if you don't have a choice and there's limited square brushes there, you can totally do it with any kind. So I'm gonna start about an inch. I'm gonna move this over so you can see the edge of the canvas. Um, I'm gonna start about an inch up, like right here. And I'm gonna, let's see. I'm gonna go slightly up a little bit, down a little bit, and then down is what I'm gonna do. So here we go. And I'm left-handed, so of course that throws a wrench in the system, right? So we're gonna go up, down, and then I'm gonna kinda go down that way. Finished it that way, kinda downward. And then from here, just uh, fill that in with your black. So we're gonna we can do it anyway. Um, they always, well, when I was in school, they always said paint the direction that you want like it to feel like it's, so like you could go kind of wavy on your way down, but it really doesn't matter. See, I made a little, there, you can just kind of go back over the top. There we go. Doesn't have to be perfect, just some bumps coming down. That's kind of what I have here. Remember to do the bottom of your canvas too. So I'm gonna do that real fast while I see that and the edges of your canvas. Just get the bottom here. Just so that can dry while we're finishing up on the top on the side. Okay, there we go. So yeah, just fill it in however you decide you want your hill to look. See, I kind of added a couple extra bumps to mine. The more organic, the more better it looks, right? Just want... There's a couple little um, spots where it was kind of a thin layer of paint. So, um, And if you need to let this dry a little bit and then go one more layer over, that's fine because sometimes too, if you go over stuff too much, it will start kind of brushing away what you've already painted. 
And since it's just one layer, I mean, all you'd need to do is probably wait five minutes tops, and then you'd be good to go for the next one. All right, I think I like that. Um, okay, so for me, I'm still gonna do the crosses over here on the right side. So again, this helps, this kind of brush helps with straight lines. Um, the round brush, you could still make it work. I'm not saying it wouldn't be, but this is just the easiest one. So remember you, you, you have three crosses here. I always like to do the top one first or the middle one, Jesus is crossed first. So I'm gonna do it just slightly over a bit so I know I have space. But even in this one, I just had it kind of going off the page. That's fine too. So you can do, again, you can do whatever you wanna do. <laughs> So I'm going to go up. I mean, obviously, we know how to draw across. And then I kind of um, kind of dab it like this. So it just looks like a square more, if that makes sense. Can make it a little thicker. I like to make Jesus's a little more thicker. And there we go. That. <laughs> and then see how I can just dab it and it just automatically gives me a straight line. It's kind of nice. <laughs> Hopefully you can see. You can even just go like that, like go upward. And it still will make like that kind of cross outline. And then I just run it along the edges so it looks a little straight. It's getting a little thick. So I might make the actual part a little thicker too to match or um, to match the top as well. Oh yeah, that's pretty good. I like that. It's just some lighter spots I'm going to fix up. Um, all right, and then we can do, I kind of like having them angled out a little bit, the other two crosses. So I make it like that tall. good okay like that and then I'll let's see I'll move this over just a little bit more so you can see how I do the other one nope. <laughs> left-handed people can you see it I mean you saw the other two and you know how to paint across so I'm not too worried if you can't see it around the canvas a little bit because the edge of the cross is off there kind of like that all right so that's it um, and then from here if you like to do letter art you could always um, use the round brush so this is where that would come in handy this little guy um, and you could do like a cursive like he is risen or you could write alleluia um, I will give the I will give Jess my set of I think I have five acrylic black acrylic markers so they're really easy and it's really just paint and you can paint it on with a marker so it's a little easier um, so you guys can experiment with those as well if you want to do a little letter art or you can just leave it on its own make sure you sign it um, and I hope you guys enjoyed uh, this little paint sip and um, happy Lent and have a great day. <laughs> I just wanted to show you guys what I did with my acrylic 
pens, I wrote the Lord is risen indeed, alleluia. So that's an idea too. Um, lots of cool things you could do with this. So I hope uh, that gives you a little bit of inspiration.